All right. Here we have, um, this is one I just did about 20 minutes ago. It took me 15 minutes to make, maybe, because I was just kind of sorting it out. Then, um, there is your standard DCP trailer. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay, so here's what I want to show you. Okay, and then I'm going to give you this visual first, and then you can decide, uh, and then I'll show you what I did, and you can decide what you like and what you don't like, okay? Here we go. Now, what I want you to see here is, okay, on the factory DC, look at this. These two are dang near level. Too bad I don't have a real level here, um, or a small one. But you can see front to back, right here, that dude is almost perfectly level. Now, why is that important? Because on the factory DCP trailer, you'll notice right here, see how we have this little uh, extension in the frame from front to back. See, it, it curves up right there, okay? I was a bit concerned about that. I thought we would have to come in and do some grinding or some sort of um, modification to the trailer itself to make this all work, and it turns out we don't have to. Okay, so this is what I want you to keep in mind. See that little curve there, right? This drops a sixteenth of an inch. So we're losing a sixteenth of frame right in here, okay? That's important to remember. Okay, now, uh, here is the trailer that I just did. Now you'll notice that I did not bother with the, I, I didn't remove any metal at all, okay? So let's just take what I cut off here, okay? Here for uh, your viewing pleasure. See that right here? And see how we, I just cut that right here? And then I just mounted that wheel right back to it. There was no moving metal here, which makes this super easy. Now what I was concerned about is what I'm showing you now. This is what had my underwear in a bind. I was worried that the back end of this trailer would be too tall and look stupid. Okay? And you'll notice that the factory trailer does dip. It, it, you actually lose a little bit. I mean, it slopes just a hair. It's hardly noticeable from front to back. And then on the, this is what I was worried about right here. So when you hook up another trailer to it, excuse me, it wouldn't be level. So. Let's just take a look at two trailers hooked together. And I'm using a Moore's Dolly, FYI. And you'll notice that it's dang near level right there. Just a little bit of difference from just a, just a taste lower. And you could probably shim that front end up to make it true level. But what's important here is this is what makes it such a beautiful beginner project because you're going to get a home run straight out of the gate and your project will look really cool and you, and you don't have to work real hard to do it. And I'm going to show you what that, why that is here in a moment. Okay, so that is what I wanted to show you there. Now I'm going to stick you back in the cradle and turn this thing um, upside down. Just a second here. Okay, let's get you... Okay, now if you are a purist, and what do I mean by purist? There are some builders out there that think there's only one way to do something, and that's fine, that's great. Um, I don't think that way, I think there's multiple ways of doing it. And if you've watched my videos very long and then watched the comments especially, you'll notice that someone will chime and say, well, you know, I do it this way or that way, and it's right. If you get the results you want, you did it right, and don't let anyone tell you different. So, even if I don't like maybe the material, or your style, or whatever, doesn't mean you did it wrong. It just means I don't like it. And the same goes for my stuff. You might look at this build that we're about to do here and say, Eric, that's not the right way to do it. I mean, they don't do that in the real world or whatever. And I'm like, great, do it your way. If you're getting the results you want, you did it right. But here, my whole point on this one particularly is to help the beginners uh, just get a real quick win and do something amazing. Okay. 
Not being particularly familiar with the California trailers, I didn't know how long to make them. So all I did was I made mine a 30 footer, didn't know any better, 30 foot works, right? So 30 foot in 164 scale means 5 and 5 eighths. We're going to put a ruler up here, go out to 5 and 5 eighths from front to back because Excuse me, the reason I'm cutting off the back versus the front is I don't want to move the landing gear. I don't want to jack with the kingpin. For me, it made more sense just to take this off and then cut it in half and then move some things forward. For me, that seemed to be logical on this build. Again, this is a way to do it, not the way to do it. But again, and I gotta uh, just, I wanna iterate that for the beginners. A great, great first project. Simple, simple, simple. Okay. So all we're gonna do here is we're gonna go over and just measure five and five eighths, one, two, three, four, five, and then make a mark right here. I'm looking for these two things when I go to cut. You can use a hacksaw, you could use a Dremel, doesn't matter. Use something that you happen to have on hand. You could use a coping saw, um, you know, what, what, and then file it smooth and level when you're all done, that'll be great. Use a coping saw if you have it handy. You don't need fancy tools. Do not let fancy tools keep you from building cool models. We have our mark. We know we're going to come right here. And then um, we're going to cut that. I'm going to true it up on the sander. And while we're here, we'll just take out these screws just because we're here. And just take those out. And you will need two trailers. Okay. Okay. And there's your mud flaps. Now I'm going to actually flip you over so you can see what I'm doing here. So I got to move. I also shot some paint while you guys were, while I was waiting for the show to start. Here we go. Okay, you'll see my bandsaw there in the background, and then also my disc sander. And I happened to pick this thing up for fifty dollars off of the internet. You know, one of those local message boards like most of you guys have. Picked it up for 50 bucks, thinking I was going to use it for other projects. I've used it on diecast so much more than, than anything else. I mean, it's paid for itself a gazillion times. Anyway, uh, and I bought the bandsaw at a yard sale for 75 Okay, now I'm just going to clean that up on my disc sander, make it nice and smooth. Alright, nice and smooth, gorgeous, beautiful, pretty. You could do this with a file, you do not need to have power tools. I keep a file here. Okay, so you could do this thing and clean up your edges, no worries, okay? Do not let power tools stop you from doing cool stuff. All right, now, you might want to save this detail right here on the back. If you've got a decent saw, you can come right here. You can cut right next to this and clean and save this and then just glue it to the back okay again this is what makes this such a beautiful beginners project you do have a little seam right there but remember you're gonna put a hay load on it anyways or you're gonna haul stuff you're gonna cover that seam up hopefully all right so I'm gonna use bandsaw again on this just because uh, we are on a time frame
okay? You could come in with a, uh, a file, sander, Dremel, whatever. You could come in here and clean this up a little bit, make it pretty if you want to. I'm not going to, just because uh, I want to keep this truck rolling forward, okay? Okay, so that much of the uh, work is done. Okay, and um, just an FYI, we've got a, uh, a, a really great builder among us in here who's made a bunch of these. Uh, Aaron Hoffmeister with Twisted H Customs has done some really amazing work with these. If you got them, um, if you have any other questions, or maybe he, I think he does it maybe differently than what I'm showing you, I'm not real sure, but just know that uh, he'd be a resource for you. Okay. Now you have these two pieces of waste, right? Well, maybe. You don't have to throw them away. You could get you a day cab or something, stretch out a frame and ta-da, you got a flatbed with a little bit of work. To this, you now have a flatbed, okay? So just remember, you can keep this, make you a tandem axle truck with a flatbed and then pull. I mean, you can actually do this number where you cut you know, you cut the back end off, this becomes your flatbed on a semi, and this becomes the pup behind it. You can do that too, okay? So you'd have a, instead of two trailers, you'd have a truck and a trailer. Out of one trailer instead of two. Okay. Okay, now, this is where it gets all amazing. All we're going to do is take a little bit of glue, and we're going to put it on the back here. A little bit of glue right there. And this is temporary, in my opinion. Um, on these, once you guys have, uh, once we sign off, I'm going to come back in with some JB Weld and just put a little splash of JB Weld between these. But this is just going to hold it until I get to that point. Okay? So let's talk about that for a moment. Okay. Again, we don't have a really gorgeous seam there, but. It's worth noting, we're going to have a load of hay on it. Who cares? I think I have a dog scratching at my shop door. She hears me talking. She's like, let me in. Actually, she's saying, let me in the house. The kids locked me out. Whoop. Now, we have um, this. Okay, let me just explain what I did here. This is the uh, tandem axle you took off. All I did was cut it in half. That's it. Nothing fancy. Took this. Let me see if I can get this up here so you can see what I did. And I even, yeah, I'm going to flip that around. Okay, so that's what I did. This is actually the same part as this. Okay, just cut it in half. That's it. Nothing fancy. Okay, then, oh, magic's about to happen like that. See that? Isn't that gorgeous? Okay. Doing a little bit of glue action right here. And uh, I'll even keep it in the shot. How do you like that? Okay. Actually, we're going to put just a bit right here too. So we can go up against that end game, or that other piece of glue on. Okay. All right, okay, now to keep this project going fast and furious, boom, boom, a little bit of insta set right there, and guys, that's it, okay? Now you could say, Eric, where's my mud flaps? Well, all right, glue the mud flaps on. You can actually probably glue the mud flaps on before, uh, well, I think if, I think if uh, I wouldn't have been in a hurry, what we could have done was taken a Dremel or even the saw or something, you could have cut a little groove in here and made a groove for these just like they came from the factory if you wanted to. Or you could say we have a low budget operation. We don't need no stinking mud flaps. Okay. Let's take a look here and see how we did. I don't think this is going to be quite legal at the end of the day. I don't think this is past California muster. I make them 26 and 28. Aha! Okay, so mine are two feet long. Too long. All right. So, 
there it is, pretty much done. But what did I forget to tell you? How to make a hitch. All right, well, let's make a hitch then. Okay, if you're using a DCP dolly instead of a Moore's, this is a Moore's Farm Toys dolly. This comes from uh, a kit form, 12 bucks, and assembled, I think they're 18, I forget. I haven't bought any in a while, but um, that's, I just buy them from Moore's Farm Toys because I like this and they work with my combine trailers. So that's why I buy them. You can buy a DCP uh, dolly. Um, they used to be prolific on eBay everywhere. Uh, couldn't hardly give them away, and now you can't find them at all. Um, the DCP has a hole in it versus a, a pin. Okay, so um, I'm not exactly sure. You could probably make a wire hook and just glue a wire hook on here for a DCP one or something like that. Or you can do what I did. I took a piece of quarter inch square tubing. I drilled a hole in it. I cut it down. I took a silver Sharpie and gave it a little color and glued it on. That's it. It's not glamorous, but guys, remember, this is a beginner project. If you're going there, perfect, another, another guy, David Gordain here, if you're, one of, if you're him, you're going to make this look a lot nicer than what I'm doing. But again, if you're a beginner, give yourself an easy home run, hone your skills. That I mean, start small, get big, uh, more complex as you go, refine your skills as you go, but this will at least give you a success, a big pat on the back, and then give you the courage to do more complex builds. I mean, that's really what it's about. Okay? I didn't start out fancy, you know, when I got going. Heck, I was, I remember the first DCP truck I cut up, I nearly wet my pants. And that was just a simple frame stretch. I almost peed myself and my wife thought I was insane. You paid how much for that and you're cutting it up? Right, you guys have been there, you know what I'm saying. Okay, let's take a look at our work. Okay guys, here it is. California style flat. And as Aaron pointed out, mine are too long. But that's, we're gonna just call that okay. So, mine are too long. No one's gonna die. Huh, looks like I got a little glue on my fifth wheel plane. I gotta get a different truck here. There we go. That's better. Now it sits flat. Okay. You'll notice the front of my pup is just a little low. A little low. Not bad. We can put a shim in there. See? About a sixteenth of an inch low. Check that out. We can shim that front up a little bit. Whoop, look at that. Put a shim in there. It's good. A little washer or something like that. And you got your, your California hay hauler, guys. That's it. Okay, question time.